about what is the perfectly imperfect bowl sale. Oh, I'm just like jumping right in the know. middle. It's the who, what, where, when, and why. Who is Timmy and Tom in Holland Bowl Mill? There you go. What is wooden bowls? Where is Holland, Michigan, and in the Nutmeg Notebook kitchen, and potentially also oh, in, in your, your kitchen. kitchen? And then the why is? Because we love chopped salads. So chopped salads are an absolute game changer for us. And we also know because we hear from all of you. I gotta go fix that camera. Look at we are crooked. We are crooked. <laughs> go fix that camera. Um, and we know that they have been a really big game changer for so many of you as well. So we have been eating a salad a day as one of our main meals since we adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle in 2013. And so um, back then in 2013, it wasn't a chopped salad, but it was a big, dark, leafy green salad with you know, lots of um, beans and starch and all the wonderful things that we love to put in our salads. But then around 2015, 2016, somewhere in there, I learned about chopped salads and I started chopping my salads and oh my gosh, it was such a big game changer for us. And I will be talking about that um, and letting you know why we love our chopped salads as well. So we started using the Holland Bowl Mill wood bowls to chop our salad in, and um, we now are affiliates with the Holland Bowl Company. We didn't start out that way, but we ended up being affiliates with them because we love their product and it allows us to make our chopped salads so simply and so well. And that's why we love to share it with all of you because our mission is to help you get healthy and stay healthy one salad at a time. We really enjoy being able to share the tips, tricks, and hints that save us time, money, and make this lifestyle easier. And so one of those things is our salads because we eat two meals a day. We have our chopped salad. Um, I usually have mine for lunch. Sometimes has, Tom has his for dinner. And so the chopped salads are half of our meals for the week. And so we're very passionate about them. They've got to taste good. They've got to be easy to make. Um, and, and we've figured out how to streamline everything. So um, I'm gonna set this aside. And so what the um, imperfect sale is, the perfectly imperfect sale is at the Holland Bowl Mill Company in Holland, Michigan, which it's a four generation um, company. Everybody's involved in it, in the family. They take uh, logs and they cut out these bowls in one piece out of the logs. And so there is no gluing there's no pieces glued together in these these are one solid wood bowl which is so amazing and so what happens is you know trees aren't perfect and so sometimes when they cut into that tree log to make a bowl there will be a little blemish like this one here and so you see how that just has a little dark blemish so they can't sell this as a premium bowl, but they can sell it as a perfectly imperfect bowl. And then it just has a little bit that um, little knot kind of shows on the outside. And um, I have no problem with that. I think it adds wonderful character to my bowl. And I think it's beautiful. And so you get a very um, reduced price on these because they are not the premium bowls. They still have a lifetime guarantee. You just need to make sure you take good care of it by never immersing it in water. You can wash it out, but we don't want it soaking in water and never put it in your dishwasher, okay? And so this one here also has just a little knot there by the rim. It has been sanded perfectly smooth. So there's no problem with using this as a chopping bowl. It will be um, 
beautiful as a chopping bowl and it can also the imperfect bowls can have some variation in color which i'll show you next so i should tell you this one is a maple um, bowl maple wood this one is cherry and then this one is a beechwood bowl and so we have a 12 inch a 15 inch and a 17 inch. Now this perfectly imperfect bowl has kind of a wild and crazy grain going on it. You see that? And I happen to absolutely love this bowl. I love the character that it has the, on the inside and the outside. Also, you can get free engraving on the bowl. So we have our little um, motto, get healthy, stay healthy, one salad at a time on here. And so you can have up to 50 characters on the bottom of the bowl and have something engraved there. Great for anniversaries, birthdays, marriages, um, all kinds of wonderful things, a, a housewarming gift, great for Mother's Day, Father's Day, all kinds of uh, reasons to give these as gifts. You can shop early for Christmas and get your bowls now. Now, also, the perfectly imperfect bowls are not necessarily completely round. And so this one, as you can see, is a little bit oblong instead of round. It re This one actually reminds me of an Easter egg. Can you see what I'm talking about? Because it's got the the little um, color down here. It's got color up at the top. It kind of reminds me of an Easter egg. I just love this bowl. So um, anyway, super excited. So you can get different things engraved on the bottom of them. This one says Nutmeg Notebook, established 2009. That's when I first started my um, blog. And then uh, Tom and Tammy established 1979. That's the year that we got married. Okay, and so I'm going to, um, oh, and then this one is also a perfectly imperfect bulb. This is a 17 inch and it is the cherry. And so I just wanna show you, you can see how the cherry can vary. Ooh, that rhymes, now I'm a poet and didn't know it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm really wound up today. I have had no caffeine, but I'm a little wound. So anyway, you can see that the, um, the cherry can vary in color. And so this one, also imperfect. This one has just a lot of different um, little spots in it. You know, that tree had a story and here it is. It's in my bowl, the little story. And then here's the outside of it. And so you can see it has a lot of variation in color going on here. And so this one is considered to be perfectly imperfect. It's not a premium bowl. To me, it's like a premium bowl because I think it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so let's talk about chopping in these. Um, I'm gonna grab my mezzaluna knife here so I can show you that. So you will be getting, you will be ordering a bowl and with whichever size bowl you order, you will get a mezzaluna knife. And this is what is used to chop the salad in the bowl, okay? So you see how it's curved, just like the bowl is curved. And so this is what we use to chop, chop our salads. It only takes three minutes to chop our salads. We've timed it just to see how long does that take us? And so you would be getting a mezzaluna knife with your bowl. It's gonna come with it. And that's also um, part of the special sale. Now, if you want to have a guard for it, you will need to buy this separately. Um, this does run about $30 for the guard because it's very labor intensive. And then this just fits down in there. I keep this out on my counter because I use my bowl every day. Tom uses his bowl every day. So um, we have two of these holders, two of the knives, and we just keep them out. So this prevents you from accidentally getting cut. It prevents the blade from you know, knocking against something and nicking something as well. So, you know, it's protection for the blade as well as protection for you. So um, you also, if your order is $100 or under, 
you will have a flat rate $10 shipping. If your order is over $100, then you will get free shipping. Everybody gets the free engraving on the bottom, but you will also get free um, shipping if your order is over $100. Now, um, these bowls are really reduced in price from the perfect, from the premium bowls. I I'm, I'm just want to show you so in one of our time-saving tips, what Tom and I do is we like to um, batch prep our salads. So I make 14 salads in 30 minutes. I know, shocking, right? We have a video um, showing you how we do that. And um, that way we both have our salads for the whole week. They really do stay nice and fresh. And um, in our video on how we make these, it show, I show you exactly how and why. So we won't go into that here. But what I wanted to show you is this is the size salad we make. This is a nine cup um, container and um, we don't you know weigh our salads but we weighed one just to see they take they weigh between 12 and 16 ounces so that gives you an idea of the size salads that we use and I just wanted to show you what it looks like in the 12 the 15 and the 17 so you can decide what size would be best for you. Maybe your salads are bigger than mine. Maybe your salads are smaller than mine. And so first I'm going to show you the 12 inch. This is the um, 12 inch maple. And I'm just gonna take my salad and I'm just gonna put it in here. I almost did it perfect. Just a couple pe pieces escape. Okay, so this pretty much fills this bowl, it's you know coming up over the top of it. I would not be able to chop my salad with this mezzaluna knife in this size bowl because there's just not enough room and pieces would be flying out because it would be too small. I could probably do a third to maybe one half of this salad at a time in this bowl. So if you make smaller salads, then you might be able to use the 12 inch. It would be too small for mine. Also, I want to point out to you that when we um, go larger in diameter, we also get a deeper bowl. So if you look, I'll put it this way so that you can see, this is the 12 inch, this is the 15, and the 15 inch bowl is deeper. So not only do you get more space um, because of the larger diameter, but it's also much deeper as well. So uh, greater capacity. And I wrote down on my notes, I have the how many quarts. So the um, 12 inch is three holds about three quarts. And then we'll move up to the 15 inch. This is the size that Tom and I use to chop our salads in every day. We each have our own chopping bowl. And then we also keep one at our daughter's house. We gave her one so that we could chop our salads there if we happen to be there at lunchtime. Okay, so can you see here? This has so much more room. In this one, the 12 inch, my salad was coming up over the top of the top rim of the bowl. And this one, I'm several inches down below the rim. This gives me plenty of room to be able to chop the salad and not have it fly out. And then after we're done chopping it, we add a lot of ingredients to it to make it um, more satiating and filling. And so this also allows us to have room to add all of those ingredients, to put our salad dressing on there. And we'll talk about what we use for those in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna bump up to the 17 inch. Again, I'm gonna move this here to show you that when we get to that larger diameter, wow, the bowl is a whole lot deeper, right? Just look at how much more depth we are going to get on that, okay? And then we can do a comparison here for you between the 12 and the 17 so that you can see that. Now this size is really great for herbs and I have one that I'll pull out if I just need to chop some herbs and I can just chop herbs in that um, 12 inch. It works good for that. Okay, so now let's show you what it looks like in the 17 inch. 
So here we go. Wow, we have tons of room in the 17 inch. So I can actually chop two to three of these salads in this big bowl at one time. And so if I'm feeding a large group, um, having people over entertaining, I can serve up to like three of the salads in here at a time. I can chop them right in the bowl. I can serve out of it if I'm going to a potluck or a picnic, same thing. I have this nice, big, beautiful bowl, which makes an excellent presentation. And then I can, um, I, you can chop in it, you can serve in it. Um, this one that I have, this one here, is my really like princess bowl. Um, pretty, I don't chop in this one. I use this one just for serving out of, because when you do chop in them, you are going to get cut marks in the bottom. And we'll show you our um, bowls that we use all the time. So you can see that you've got still lots of room in here. Um, I have friends who have the 17 inch, they're feeding their families, and so they um, have the larger bowl so that they can do more salad. Now, another thing that you can use these bowls for is I like to set this one on my dining room table in the winter time. And I like to put my beautiful winter squashes in here because they make for a gorgeous fall display. It gives me some place to put them as well. And so it works great for that, for that butternut squash and the, um, the kabocha, which is my favorite squash and acorn squash. And so I'll just load up on squash and fill that. And it becomes a centerpiece for me as well as giving me a place to store those. And so, so here we've got um, that salad, lots of room here. So you can also use a big bowl like this for fruit. You can pop popcorn fill this baby up with popcorn if you're having um, a gathering and it will hold a lot of popcorn for you as well. Tortilla chips, we make our own oil-free tortilla chips. You can fill it with tortilla chips and have salsa. Um, it's really great for that. So you can do more things with these bowls than just chop salads in them. So I just wanna point that out. So any questions here about this, Tom? Uh TS has a question about chopping, which I think um, you could go ahead and address about how, using the, the uh, uh, mezzaluna knife. She says, uh, if you are a bit shorter and the counter is kind of high, does it work better to kind of roll the mezzaluna or try to chop straight down both ways seems kind of hard for me. I have arthritis. Yeah, so you'll have to really, you'll have to really experiment and see what works best for you. You might want to not do it on the countertop. You might want to move to your kitchen table. And so I have um, some different kitchen appliances. I'm um, just five, three and a half. And so sometimes the island or my countertop is too tall for me in order to be able to efficiently um, have enough leverage. Like when you use the do. Chop Wizard. The, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so I end, do you want this? Yeah, I'm gonna. And so I that. end up, if I can go to my kitchen table, then it works much better for me because then it isn't up so high for me. So you'll kind of have to experiment and see what works um, best for you. And you can get a, um, like a rotary type um, cutter that um, it almost you roll looks, back and yeah, forth in the bowl. That almost looks like a pizza cutter, except it has two blades. If you go on Amazon and look, you um, would be able to find that, and then that might work um, better for you in the bowl. Okay, and yeah. then did you want to show something? Yeah, and if I stay that, my head's going to be cut off. But um, I can go move the camera, or you can just stay there. Okay. What do you want to do? Well, why don't you move the camera? I'm going to come to the center. Just, okay, just sure. bring it up a little bit. I'll let you get over there because I I've um, hey, know exactly ahead. what she's talking about. Go ahead so, and stand up. Get you on camera one, a little bit higher. Yeah. So okay, so I do a combination of both things, TS, that you're mentioning. Um, I tend to tuck my just this is about comfort for <laughs> older bones. Okay. Do you want me to grab your yeah. bowl and have you just do where a little is it chop? at? It's in the pantry. Okay, yeah, that would be good. 
So, um, oh, because we're done, you're done show and tell in the salad. I can do a couple of chops for real? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to do a couple of real chops then. Um, so I, I had an elbow injury years ago, and so it just is a little sensitive sometimes. And so if I'm using all this arm motion. First, let's show yeah. them the patina okay. and the cut marks. Yeah, this is a real bowl. It's got green patina because it gets a salad chopped in it, a salad chopped in it most days. And I can show you that, you know, it. what, what you're seeing is all cut marks. There's no inch of this that's not covered with a thousand cut marks because it's been chopped many thousands of times. And the green patinas from the... Chlorophyll from the salad, yeah. So, this. so this is officially my salad. This is going to be my dinner, folks. Yep. Sorry if I One was... little green fill on the countertop. Oh, and you no. Need to, if you can pull it back a little bit because I'm not getting the bowl in the well, t Go ahead and tip it down. Shot. Go ahead and tip it down. Okay. Uh, there you go. Okay. That is good. Okay. Perfect. And actually, when when we when I start chopping here, if you would tip it down and, and zoom in on the and, and tip it forward to the salad, so so uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I tend to just tuck my elbow in here and and go like that. That way, my my wrist is it, this isn't wrist action at this point. I'm just using my elbow here, and you don't have to kill it. You're just kind of chopping around and I tend to chop uh, kind of on the side towards me and then I rotate the bowl and then I you know give it a toss with my hands and keep going like that and then you mentioned rolling and so sometimes up around the edge if I get some stragglers I will do this rolling thing now to me that's harder this is a lot of wrist action mm -hmm. and and so I'm using this usually if I have something you know later that, that's kind of escaping the chopping process. But really, I'm just doing this. I'm not, I'm not using so much force as I am just kind of a nice, easy, rapid speed, and I'm not traumatizing this wrist. And you see how quickly this is chopping down with just a little action here. And, that, and, I, and I work hard not to cut my fingers. I just want to say that I do not chop when my other hand's in the bowl. Just saying. Yeah, that's been a discussion on YouTube a couple of times. I'm doing less hands in the bowl here. But see, most of, yeah, most of this action is happening up here where I've got you know, more muscle, more bone, and less arthritis. Because the rolling, thing, like here's a straggler, so I might, I might do this. I might just give that a roll. Some kale is trying to escape. That's why I toss that back into the middle. But see, I'm not, I'm not being real dramatic. I'm not having to, go ahead and back out, Timmy. All right, roll back out. Roll it out. Hey, did you guys see the thumbnail I made for the video? <laughs> with my plain simple salad and Tammy's fancy schmancy one. She's gonna cook some really fun stuff that she puts on her salads and sometimes I get them too. So anyway, enough of that chopping, but I hope that addresses your question. That's just a technique I've developed over the last few years. Really, this, this movement. Okay, dinner's half ready. Keep it there so I can talk about the bowl. Okay. okay so this one I'm gonna is... I'm gonna mix this off. Okay. Are you gonna put stuff on this or no? Do I need, I, I'm almost done chopping. <laughs> it's not your prettiest bowl. This is my bowl. It's my bowl. Tom likes the beechwood, and his this one is not perfectly round either. It's this little, one is a little ovally. But it is a premium bowl. It doesn't yeah. have any knots in and, it. Okay. That's, That's probably good. good. Okay. Yeah. And, and so yeah, it takes I, about three minutes to I'm chop wipe, it. I'm wiping when we're not talking. Off the blade. I'm not wiping across the blade. Right. Good job, honey. Good job. All right. So this is um, holds approximately six quarts. Now, um, you just need to know that the size of the bowl is approximate, and the capacity that we're giving you is also approximate. Um, because these are cut out of the log, they kind of go with you know the shape of the log and if you know how deep they can make it and so forth and so um that's just 
how it, how it goes. So this, we have the 12 inch, we have the 15, and then the, um, the 17 inch holds approximately 10 quarts, okay? So there you can see we've got those three different sizes going, three different depths. The bigger the size of the bowl, the deeper the bowl is. All right, any questions <laughs> about that? Sally says, my bowl is so beautiful, I can't bring myself to chop in it. I understand. Which, which wins you a Tom lecture right out of the gate. This bowl is my bowl. It feeds me well. It is a tool. It's how I prepare my food that nourishes my body. I love my bowl. <laughs> I chop in it and it feeds me. He it's loves what his bowl. It, it's what it's for in this house. That's now, if you want a decorative bowl, that's a different conversation. Tammy does have those. This one is not decorative. Yes, okay. I do. I do have my special bowls that that yeah. um, that we don't chop in that yeah. are for just serving. Yeah. So you know, I have a 15 inch that is um, pristine, and so I just serve out of it. That 17 inch, I just serve out of it and so um so you know i have i have more than one so that i can do that but i'm perfectly <laughs> sally said she's listening <laughs> okay i'm perfectly happy chopping in my cherry 15 inch that i use on a daily basis so we do the one question that always comes up is um do the cut marks show they do basically this is like a wood cutting board but in the shape of a bowl. And so your wood cutting boards, when you use your sharp knives on those to cut your vegetables, it gets cut marks on it and it's marred. And if you do a lot of greens on it, then you do get that green patina. And so that is just know that that is what's going to happen with these. Now these bowls, even though these are the perfectly imperfect, you still get the lifetime warranty on them just like you do with the premium bowls, um, which that's really important to know as well. And so, and the, um, the imperfect sale only happens once a year because they save up the, the perfectly imperfect bowls for us throughout the year and then they offer this exclusively to the Nutmeg Notebook um, family and this is our fourth annual year of um, sharing the perfectly imperfect sale with you. So let's talk about the remaining quantities. I don't think we've done that yet. We have and not. Because when you move into the cooking demo, we will be talking just about the cooking and, and not so much the bowls. Because we're going to edit this video to leave up past the imperfect soul because there's a lot of great information Tammy has prepared for you included in today's video. But, <laughs> but I need to edit out the uh, sales stuff after the video is over. Um, on the bowls, there are plenty of 12-inch bowls. As you make an order on site, I just put the, the, the link is in the show notes and I just added it to the chat feed a little bit ago. Uh, you can specify your wood request. Uh, requesting a particular type of wood is actually encouraged because they want you to, um, uh, you know, if you have a preference, they would like you to have your preference. If they run out of a type of wood, then they will just pick the next closest type of wood. If you've asked for maple and there's no maple, they'll send the beech wood. Uh, if you ask for walnut and there's no walnut left, then they will send uh, a cherry, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and so. when you're ordering, you're not ordering by type of wood, you're ordering by size. Yeah, you're this gonna goes designate, in the comments. Yeah, it, if it, you have a preference, then... Put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the perfectly imperfect, when, when, when the inventory dwindles down, there just, there is what there is. It's by size. Uh, but we asked Corey specifically this morning, and he said yes people can request the wood. In particular, the 17, well, let's, we'll get to that. There's lots of 12s. Uh, request, request your wood and, and, uh, and you may very well likely get it. The 15 inches, I checked right before showtime, they were still showing some available, but at uh, noon today, there was less than 20. Uh, and that was like at noon, which was four hour or four and a half hours ago. So my guess right now, there's probably 12 or 15 left, maybe. 
So if you're if you're if you're hankering a 15 inch bowl, get uh, it today. I would recommend you order it in the next the next short while. Uh, the 17 inch bowl, uh, there are still 46 left. The inventory in those is pretty good. Um, and a wide variety of woods are available, he said. Yeah, and to avoid confusion, there's walnut bowls, there's cherry bowls, there's beechwood bowls, there's ash, oak, but they're, they are at different price points. So if you, in your comments, request a walnut bowl and you get it at the, at the uh, imperfect, perfectly imperfect bowl price, it's a 60% discount on that type of wood from what you would normally pay for a walnut bowl. And in a 17 inch. In the 17 inch. If you are getting a cherry bowl, uh, you know, then maybe it's 50% off. If it's a beechwood bowl, then it's 40% off. So, uh, so if you are requesting a higher priced category of wood, the, the amount that you're getting, because the the price for the size doesn't change based on the wood since you're not choosing the wood. But uh, make your request and maybe you'll win the wood bowl lottery uh, <laughs> on, 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 on getting that particular type of wood. Um, and the oak and the cherry and which others are the more expensive? Oak, oak cherry, cherry and, and um, yeah, the red oak, the cherry and walnut are the three most ah, expensive. Yes. I don't know where ash, uh, yo, I don't know where, uh, we, don't we know. didn't have ash last year, but there were some ash ones this year. That's a This is a walnut. walnut, so we just wanted to show you for um, color. Here, let's do that in the camera that one, because like. it's not really, you okay. can do a better job so there. So this one is walnut, and then this is um, birch, and then this one is cherry. And again, they're gonna vary depending on the tree. They might be lighter, they might be dark, darker, and they also might have variation um, in the color. You mean all trees are not exactly identical? I know, hard to believe, isn't yeah. it? And so you'll get some variation in the grain um, on those yeah. as well. Okay, so, so we're doing so good. So if there's no other questions about the sale, we're gonna move into Tammy's cooking demo, and we're not gonna talk about the sale during that. We will just follow up at the end on any sale questions. So. Okay, so there are questions about what else you can serve um, in them. You could do your pasta salad in them. You could do um, your tortilla chips. You can pop popcorn and put popcorn in them. If you have um, the smaller ones, you know, any type of salad that you may have, you can put in here. You, you know, you could do your potato salad in here. What you want to make sure that you do is that you keep these well oiled or well waxed so that they're, they, um, that creates a bit of a barrier so that liquids in these do not um, soak in. The only thing that, that stains it is we do find that Strawberry. the green, yeah, the greens make a green patina and strawberries for some reason, tomatoes don't do it raspberries don't discolor it even our beets don't do it oh you've got green on your chin our um don't do it but but strawberries leave a little bit of a stain if you put the strawberries and, in and here. they can sit there for any yeah, amount of time but you can set it out in the sun and the sun will bleach it back yeah okay also before we leave the ordering discussion when you get to the website um and i should i should just show that really quick tammy um, sure. You know, it's, it's going to look like this Holland Bowl Mill, Shop Holland Bowl Mill's imperfect sale. And here's where they're showing the, some samples of bowls. And I wanted to bring your attention to the, to the uh, maple uh, Caesar salad utensil scent, the, the bees oil, and the, the, um, chop, the, the chopping knife and the sheath. The chopping knife you get. Uh, sorry mezzalina. about the flashing. I'm going to come back to camera one here. I don't know why that's flashing. I don't know. You get the mezzaluna. Yeah, that comes, comes with, with it. Each bowl comes with a mezzaluna. But if you want to get the, sh the holder, the knife holder or the sheath, then you need to order this separately. And, and now would be the time. Yeah, the beeswax and that free shipping if you would Yes, and I would get... So um, if you're an ethical vegan and you don't want the bees oil wax combo that they put on it, in the comments when you place your order, ask them to not use that. And what you can do is you can buy um, food grade mineral oil 
that you can use on the bowl instead. You would want to, if you're chopping a salad every day, then Corey from Holland Bowl Mills suggests that you wax it or oil it once a week. That gives the wood protection because every time you use it, you're rinsing it out with water and um, that dries out the wood. And so you want to keep it um, well maintained. That's also how you maintain the lifetime guarantee. So if something were to go wrong with your bowl, as long as you have taken good care of it, then um, they will replace it if it does crack. And that that's also you know for imperfect, perfectly imperfect mm. bowls as well as the premium bowls. Okay. And yes. There's another ordering question when you're done. Okay, sure. Um, um, where on the site? Um, can I see the wood samples? Okay, so in uh, in the imperfect site, when you get there, uh, I just clicked on the picture of the 15 inch bowl in the imperfect site, and there's those three, four little windows. You can click on those, and that will show you a typical imperfection. Um, that only flashes when I put it to the ATEM, so I don't know why it's doing that. It, it doesn't. Um, it if you want to point. see the uh, images of the you know all of the wood types f for the sake of making your your um, selection the, the request in the comments box you can go to the Holland Bill uh, Holland Bowlmill dot com forward slash nutmeg I'll put that in the in the chat mm -hmm. um, and take and then click on bowls look at bowls and then they will detail all the woods the woods there for the premium bowl selections that you know the ones that they sell that we sell normally so um so that would give you a look at what an oak looks like what a cherry looks like what a maple looks like so absolutely all right okay good good um so anyway i answered the question about what you can serve in the bowls that you don't use for chopping and okay ryan says that's great to hear i got a 12 inch and requested walnut and i ordered within a couple hours of the sale on tuesday so awesome and so they um corey told us today they have already shipped um, a lot of the orders from the, first and day, yeah. from the first day and you know if you're getting engraving that you know it, that takes a little bit longer because they're going to do the engraving but um, they plan on shipping everything within five to seven days of you having ordered it and so he thinks by the end of next week that they will have shipped um, all of the orders by the end of next week so so that's very exciting all right I think we're ready then um, perhaps to move on. So I just want to go over one more time. So we have three different sizes of bowls for chopping. So we have the Holland Bowl Mill 12 inch bowl, and then we have the Holland Bowl Mill 15 inch, and then we have the Holland Bowl Mill 17 inch. So this one is maple, this one is um, beechwood, no, this one is maple. This one is your bowl. Where's my cherry? My cherry's gone. <laughs> That's what confused and where's me. where's that utensil set that we wanted to show? Is it, it's in on the dining room table. Okay. Okay, here we go. We have the 12 inch in maple. We have the 15 inch in cherry. And then this is a 17 inch in the beech wood. And so as you, get larger in diameter you also get more depth that's why we have these staged here so that you can see the stair stepping effect okay and then this is what the um, bees oil container looks like and um, we do suggest that you get this we actually like this better than using the mineral oil we feel like it adds a better layer of protection and seems to last longer for us, but you can also use the um, food grade mineral oil. We don't suggest using a nut oil because nut oil or olive oil can go rancid. And so um, get the mineral oil. It doesn't offer any discoloration. It doesn't have an odor to it at all. And then also on the um, perfectly imperfect cell, you can also get the salad servers, which is really nice when you have these big beautiful bowls of salad as well okay 
So can you give me a new opening for the cooking demo? Everybody? Well, yeah, but let me set these aside. Yeah, I'll come around and get them. <laughs> uh, you're so funny. Okay, this is how things go when we're um, video recording our videos, the pre-recorded ones, you guys. And so whenever we get the camera set up, it's like a studio in here. You can't see, but we have lights and cameras and tripods and monitors and all kinds of wires going everywhere. And so we usually try to do three or four videos um, at a time because um, my kitchen's not real functional okay. when it's set up for recording. Okay, so, so what I'm just about gonna, these guys? Do you want both of these big guys here? I'm going to grab my stuff these, here. These bowls? Do you want both of these here or none? No, I don't need those. Okay. Because right. I'm, I, we'll talk about, we can talk about the bowls again at the end. Yes. But um, I'm going to do some, a little bit of prep here. And then if you want to hand me that tray. Okay. I'll let you have those. I'll keep that with those other bowls. I'll put my phone over here. Okay, first up. This is like a scene change in a play. It is. It's like a scene change in a play. That's exactly right. What did I come right. out here to get? Um, this tray. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does that ever happen to you guys? Like, I go upstairs to get something, and by the time I get up there, I have forgotten. What did I go up there for? I have no clue. No clue. All right. Okay. So, um, Holland Bowl Mill does have a lot of different um, products that we also love. Okay, well, let's get our new start before you start talking about stuff. Okay. Okay, is everybody in the audience, is everybody in the audience quiet? They're all quiet. Quiet they're, on they're set? They're ready. They're okay. ready. All right. And? Hi, everybody. Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. I want to show you how you can make amazing chopped salads. What makes them so amazing? Lots of wonderful different kinds of toppings um, are what we like to add to it. So after we've chopped our salad, then we want to add other things to it that will help make it um, more satiating, delicious, and satisfying. So we eat a chopped salad every day. We always look forward to our chopped salads. It's a habit we've been doing since um, 2013. They weren't chopped salads back then, uh, but they morphed into being chopped salads. So this is a concept that we learned from Dr. Joel Furman. His Eat to Live book was one of the first whole food plant-based books that I read. And he suggests that you have one salad a day as your main meal. And to remember that salad is the main dish. And so we really took that to heart. We started doing that right away. Um, even though Tom hadn't jumped in with me completely doing whole food plant-based, he was really on board with the salads because the first time he saw the salad that I made for myself, he was like, man, that looks good. And I think I would like that too. And so I started making two of them whenever I made them. And, um, and we haven't stopped since. So since 2013 and having a salad almost every single day, I mean, how many would that be that we've had at this point and we're not bored with them? And the reason is, is that we add things to them to make them extra delicious. So I like different textures in my salads. And so, you know, we've got the crunch and all the wonderful texture from the vegetables in our salad, but then I want some other things. And one thing that I really missed was croutons. I mean, I, I like croutons, but I'm gluten-free, and so, and croutons are usually filled with either, they have oil or butter, they're super salty, um, which I know those are a lot of things that we liked before we started eating healthy. But I make chickpea croutons, and I, make them in the air fryer and it's super, super easy. So um, I have just a half a batch of them here. And actually, Tom, let's see, I do have my recipe here. You can also, you can get the, um, the recipe is on our blog, or if you have our chopped salad course, we have a, a whole course on our website where we have, I think it's 12 videos in this one. And then you also get this PDF recipe um, ebook, which is filled with salad dressings and salsas and all different kinds of wonderful things to make your salad super delicious. And then I also give you 25 different ideas on salads that you can make um, so that you won't get bored with your salads. Okay. And so I will just bring up the chickpea 
croutons, and you can print this if you want to print it. We actually took ours to Staples and had it printed, um, but you can print it on your home printer if you wish. And I should have bookmarked this to begin with, but I didn't, and so we're just gonna find it. I also um, teach you in here how you can saute batch prep salads. We batch prep our salads once a week. I make 14 of them, seven for Tom and seven for myself. And um, let's say it's a cold winter day and you just don't feel like you want that chopped salad. Well, guess what? You can turn it into a, um, a saute instead. And I teach you how to do that as well. Okay, so here's the garlic chickpea croutons. If you were just to Google, not make no, but garlic chickpea croutons, um, Google would help you find the link to my blog for this printable recipe. And so this is just half the recipe because I already made half so that I could show them to you. So you would use two cans of um, 15 ounce, 15.5 ounce or the size that I get, garbanzo beans, salt free if that's um, necessary for you, and just reserve a little bit of that aquafaba. The aquafaba is the liquid that's in the canned beans, or if you make your own, then um, that's fine too. And so I just put the um, drained beans in here with two teaspoons, if you're doing the full recipe, two teaspoons of the aquafaba, and then I just add my seasonings. I mean, this couldn't be easier, you guys. And so in here I have, um, it would call for two teaspoons of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder. I use a teaspoon of salt substitute because I don't use salt generally when I'm cooking. But if you use salt, you could add salt instead. A teaspoon of nutritional yeast and about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can skip the cayenne pepper if you don't like it. Um, to be have a little bit of heat or you could use smoked paprika would be really nice in it too and so I just put those seasonings in and I give it a stir and then Tom I'm going to need you to hand me the air fryer tray that's on top of the, the um, stove and then you're just going to stir it up because we just want to make sure that everything gets nicely coated that aquafaba does help um, the um, Thank you. Does Oh, I need the tray that was under it. Because that keeps me... Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh. It keeps trying to take everything away. This is how I keep from making a mess all over everything. He's like, what is she doing? Um, and I'm going to air fry them. So this is my air fryer rack. I have the Breville Smart Oven Air, which has this nice large capacity. If you have the bucket style, then you might... Um, have to you know make the crispy chickpea croutons in batches so but I can do the whole recipe with the two cans on here and it works fine so now you can see I've just gotten those really nicely coated and then I just um, put them out on the tray and I try to you know scrape and get those yummy seasonings so that I have them here and then I spread these out and you want it to be a single layer so that the heat can get to everything. All the little chickpeas. And that way, if, it, if the pan isn't overcrowded, then they do crisp up a bit quicker, which is really nice. And then I'm just gonna put them in at 400 degrees for, it takes about 20 minutes in my air fryer depending on your air fryer, you know, you'll have to figure out what is the best for you. I just put it on top of a tray or I'll put a piece of parchment paper under it both before I put it in the oven and then when I bring it out of the oven because it just makes cleanup easier. That way, you know, it's not everywhere. So I'm just going to pop these in. And it's already set to 400. We'll get rid of this. And like halfway through, if I'm not too distracted with you all, then I will um, go over and just shake the pan a little bit just to kind of try to rotate them a little bit. You could also, you could take a wood utensil or a spatula 
and you could um, just move them around. If you have the bucket style, Tom's setting a timer for me, thanks babe. Uh, if you have the bucket style, you can just pull that bucket out and you know give it a shake and then put it back in. And just watch them closely um, so that they don't burn because they do seem to go from almost done to um, burnt in, in a hurry. So um, just be cautious of that. Okay, so another thing I like, Tom, if you would just, um, um, I'm gonna need that one, that rack too, but if you could just, it's got a little crumbs on it because of the croutons I already made. Um, and so, oh, well, I should show you the finished product. Hello. So here is the finished product. Let me get it up here so you can see. These are really delicious. They have a really nice crunch to them. Now, here's one of the tricks to how to keep them crispy, is let them cool completely on the rack when you take them out so that um, if you put them in a container right away or even if you um, don't put a lid on it, then all of that heat will create some moisture and then they will get soggy. So I like to leave them out until they're completely cool and then sometimes I will go ahead and leave them out overnight when you want to get a close up overnight without um, having a lid on them just so that they can completely get dry. Now tomorrow if you go to have some and tomorrow they have gotten a little bit soft then I just put them back in the air fryer but I stay right there do not walk away because it might take less than a minute but I will stay right there and I will you know give the tray a little shake but just uh, like another minute or so will be just enough to dry up that little bit of moisture. Once they are completely dry, in a completely dry state, then they will last in my pantry literally for weeks. But you've got to make sure they don't have any moisture because if they have moisture, then that can grow bacteria which turns in to mold. Now we make these and we put these on top of our salad. When we travel, we take these. You know, we recently went to Panama and Costa Rica and I made a double batch of these and we took them with us. They make great toppings for salads if we order a salad in a restaurant or at the airport, um, you know, because then we're getting our beans. It's a nice um, protein to have if we can't find anything other than just a plain salad makes a great snack as well because they're crunchy delicious and you know they're packed with fiber and protein and so we always travel with these they're great for hiking and backpacking and camping and bike riding and you name it because you can just put them in a little container and take them with you they don't weigh much they don't take up a lot of room and they're super filling and satisfying so and i love these on my salads they also you can use them on top of like a creamy soup you know how maybe you used to like croutons floating on top of your tomato soup well instead use some of these these are really delicious you guys and they just add a lot and make an amazing chopped salad all right so another thing that i like if you have watched me um, very much let's see tom i'm gonna need my chef's knife over there uh, you know that I love Mexican food and one of my favorite chopped salads is my Mexican chopped salads and I make them in different ways sometimes I just use beans sometimes I have my um, mushroom lentil tacos that um, mushroom lentil mushroom taco lentils <laughs> I know I'll get it right um, and I really love those and corn and either oat groats or some um, brown rice and salsa and green onions and all the yummies. Well, I was really missing having the, you know, some tortilla chips in there as well. And so I have um, figured out how to make some really delicious, yummy little crispy tortilla strips 
and if you cut them into strips, you'll use a lot less than if you do chips. So if you're trying to lose weight, this is a really good tip for you because you will still get the crunch and the flavor, but you know you won't go over calorie wise. So these are just um, organic corn tortillas, the Mi Rancho brand. We buy these at Costco. I actually like their thinnables better for this, but we didn't have any today. And so I'm using these, but the thinnables are thinner, they cook faster, and um, I feel like they get a little bit crispier um, instead of the thicker ones, but the thicker ones will work too. So I just have three of them stacked here, and I'm just going to cut this in half, and then I'm just going to cut this into strips. So just like this. Now if you want them smaller, you could cut this in half again, and you can cut them as thick or as thin as you like. So I just do this. And again, this is something that you can do well in advance. I usually do one or two pans of these at a time because once they are air fried, as long as you've got them crispy, they will last for weeks in your pantry. So you can put them in like a glass canning jar or you can, um, Put them in, I have those like stasher bags and I'll just put them in a stasher bag. And if we're going to um, a Mexican restaurant, if I'm going to get a salad, I can take these with me. If I'm going to get um, beans and rice, I'll go ahead and make my chips and I'll take my chips with me um, because the ones in the restaurant are going to be full of oil and salt. And sometimes I even take my own salsa because um, I'm kind of picky about my salsa. So, so now we're just going to finish cutting these. And it's super easy to do more than what you need for that one salad. So why not? You cook once, you get twice the amount of food, and you only have to do dishes one time. I'm all over that. So that's part of my, my philosophy in the kitchen is to work smarter not harder in the kitchen. Okay, so now I've got all of these corn tortillas cut into strips, and then I just spread them out on here. The more even that you can get them, you know, so that they're not all bunched up, the crispier each one of them will get. They don't, you don't have to leave a lot of space between them. And how long it takes will vary depending on how moist the tortillas are and also your air fryer, okay? So it doesn't always take the exact same time. In mine even, even if I'm using the same brand of tortillas because sometimes they're dry, sometimes they're more moist. And so also one thing that you can do if you want, if you like them to be a little bit um, limey, like the Chipotle, um, the restaurant Chipotle, like their chips, you can brush them with a little bit of lime juice with a pastry brush first, or you can just you know squeeze some on and rub it in with your fingers. You can do that. If you like them to be somewhat salty, you could sprinkle a salt substitute on them, or if you use salt, then you could sprinkle them with a little bit of salt as well. And then go ahead and air fry them. And because you've put the lime juice on there, it can take a little bit longer to cook them because you've added moisture to them, but they're really delicious. So we just want to do this, and I can see I've got some space there where I can add some more. And these are really good. So I love having these made up in advance, and then I can just sprinkle some over the top of my salad, and it's so delicious. I just, I like that, getting that little crunch. So I'll go ahead and chop my salad, and I'll mix my dressing or my salsa in there, and then um, right before I go to eat it, then I will add these to the top of the salad. And it's just really yummy. And, you know, it doesn't add a lot of calories to it. It's low calorie density because we haven't added in 
a bunch of oil. So there you go. So that's how this looks. And then when the chickpeas get done, then we'll put these in the oven. For our air fryer, I do 375 degrees and we'll set it for about four minutes. The, my oven's gonna be already warm, so we might do three minutes and check it because since it's already hot, then um, it might uh, it might not take as long. So now there was a question, do you typically preheat the oven before you I do don't. these? Okay, and that's what I put in the chat. I usually, for all the air frying. And your 10 minute timer from when you started it. Oh, not, is it? Not, not from when the timer started, but from when you pushed the button. And well, we'll just, we'll go ahead and give them a little shake because we're thinking about it. Okay. There we go. And use, use an oven glove that really saves you from getting burnt in there. So I don't preheat that oven. The, um, unless I'm baking in it, then I would preheat it. But for air frying with it, I don't preheat it. So, oh, also, these are oil-free, they're organic. Um, they are water organic, whole white corn, organic yellow corn, masa flour, a trace of lime, and a little bit of gargum in them. Trader Joe's also has a corn tortilla that, at least where we live, it is just um, corn and a trace of lime. So look at the backs of them and make sure, and some corn tortillas do have some flour mixed in them, and so they're not gluten-free. And so if you um, are gluten-free, just make sure that you really pay attention to that. Okay, so then another thing that we love, so we've got the corn tortilla strips, and we have the um, crispy garlic and chickpea croutons. And so either one of those adds a lovely crunch. You can make both of those in advance. Now the next thing that I'm gonna show you is um, Japanese sweet potato croutons. And I really love these. They can be a great um, topping for our salads. They can be an appetizer. They can be a snack. Um, if it's movie night at your house, these are really great for that. You can make them for the kids. You can make them for company. They're really delicious. So what I have here is let me put it this way so you can see. I have a Japanese sweet potato and I have a, a Hannah sweet potato. And so um, these have a creamy um, inside. Here, show, you can show us here maybe, camera two. Okay, so these have um, a creamy, the inside is kind of a creamy color and the outside of the Japanese one is purplish and then the, um, the Hannah is cream colored inside and the outside is tan a little bit, uh, looks a little bit like a russet potato. So you can use any kind of sweet potato. My preference are the Japanese or the Marisaki that Trader Joe's sells. And then I also um, like the Hannah's for this. You could use just regular, the orange jewels or garnets as well. They are a little bit softer and moist and so they might take a little bit longer um, to cook and they might not get as crispy. So just don't over bake them to begin with. So I baked these when I batched prepped earlier in the week. I baked these at 400 degrees for about an hour and 20 minutes, hour 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big they are. And, um, cause I want them nice and soft. And then, um, because they're, they're a hard potato, much harder and more dry than garnets or jewels. And so then when they're done baking, once they've cooled down, then I put them in a container, standing up in a container so that they won't get soggy and I put them in the refrigerator uncovered because that keeps them more dry. If you cover them, they get really wet and um, they just get soggy. Now, I leave the skins on, I buy organic, I scrub them really well, and I love how they get crispy in my air fryer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some everything bagel spice is gonna go on the plate. And I have, maybe you wanna do a close up? 
on that, Tom? Yeah, can you push number two? Sure. Okay, so I have um, everything bagel seasoning, that's all three of these are salt free. So this one is from Well Your World and um, we do have a link for them that we can give you in, we, is it in the I'll show notes? I'll have to put notes? it in. Tom will put it in. So this is from an online company. Our friends Dylan and Reeves make all kinds of amazing SOS free products that are all vegan, whole food, plant-based, salt, oil, and sugar free. And this one happens to have um, a different combination in it. It has sunflower seeds, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, garlic, onion, and red bell pepper, and um, really delicious and fun. And then this one is the um, Spice Hunter, and this one is from, um, Oh, I've just sprouts. I got this at Sprouts. I had to stop and think, where did I buy this at? And this one is salt free. It's sesame seeds, garlic, black sesame seeds, toasted onion, onion, and poppy seeds is this one. And so this one's really good as well. And then my last one is from my friends at local spicery. I'm trying to get it so the light doesn't blank it out. This one is from local spicery. And I have to look at the bag to tell you this one is also salt free and it is toasted sesame, garlic, poppy seed, onion, and black sesame seeds. Okay, so all three of these are um, equally delicious and I like them all. So um, whichever one that you can find and the one that, um, the, that they'll have at a regular grocery store will probably have salt in it. And oftentimes salt is the first ingredient and you really don't need to have salt in these. They're so delicious all on their own. And these are gonna um, get toasty in the air fryer and it intensifies the flavor. So what I do is I just put some out on a plate. And also you guys, I store this in my refrigerator because nuts and seeds can go rancid and we don't use them often enough um, to ensure that they're not gonna go rancid before we're able to finish them. So I keep all three of these go in my refrigerator and that way I know that they're gonna be fresh and they are not gonna go rancid on me. And you can tell if they're rancid by how they smell. Open it up and smell it, I always do, and um, make sure that it is still okay. All right, so, and we're using the local spicery one today and it is so delicious. Okay, so we're gonna set that off to the side and then all I do is I take and I cut my sweet potato in half and then I have the um, half moons. Now, if it's a smaller sweet potato, you can just leave it in rounds, which I'll show you with that Hannah. And again, I do like the skin to be left on. So I'm just cutting it. Here we go. And then I'm just, I just do one Hold side. It. let me catch up with you. Oh, I'm, you're off I'll screen. bring it back, I bring it back. And then I just do one side of it, like a so and then I put it on my air fryer tray, which I already did a couple of them on here, just so we would have a little bit of a head start. So, am I back far enough to yeah. get in the camera? Okay. Yeah. No, I was just trying to push So, the after you've baked these sweet potatoes, the skin does come, um, become a little bit loose, but I just keep it on there. The potato's moist enough that I can just you know, kind of use it like glue to keep it on there. And then we're gonna cut another one. And so you see, it's just really easy to do. You can get the kids involved in doing this. Sometimes I will make these up ahead of time. If we're doing like a, a meetup with friends at a vegan restaurant, and I know I'm gonna order a salad and I'm gonna want more starch on it because maybe they don't have starch or not enough for me. And then we'll just put that there. And I have this other little piece here. We'll go ahead and get it. And then I'll show you the Hannah. And the Hannah 
I did not cut in half because this Hanna is pretty small. And so that would, the croutons would be too small and get too crisp too fast for my liking. You might like it. And so I'm just gonna go ahead, and I've already cut a few of these to put on my tray. And so this is just a nice little round crouton. And we're just gonna have it dipped in this. So nice. You could do both sides, I guess, if you wanted to, but um, it's plenty, I think, to just have it on the one side. And then we'll do that. Very yummy. And we'll go ahead and make a couple more. So these will not stay crisp um, if you make a batch of them ahead of time and don't eat them all. They will get soft. But what you can do is you can just pop them back in the air fryer um, just for like a minute or so because they are already, the, the um, everything bagel se seasoning is already going to be toasty and so you don't want to burn it. Okay, we'll do one more. But uh, I will take enough of these to share if I take them someplace, and they're so good. You could even do just a tray of these. I'm back on camera one. Okay, you could even just do a tray of these to um, take to a party. And, and they, everybody would love them because you don't have to be whole food plant-based to enjoy these. And so, and what I have, whatever I would have left on here, I wouldn't put back in the bag because it's got moisture on it from the potatoes, but you could just take this and you can sprinkle it over your salad and just add a little more flavor and some yummy crunch to your salad as well. And so this is what they look like. And we will air fry these when um, when the croutons are done. I'm just going to take a peek at them and see how they're doing. How are they looking? We're, we've got a close yeah, up going. I think they're about done. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Okay. And so I'm just going to show you. And because I had air fried things um, before we started, it was my air fryer was still hot. And so um, they weren't put into a cold oven. So they did get done faster. And now we're going to go ahead, we're going to put in the tortilla strips. Let me move those and you set that down because these are not hot yet. Okay, got They're probably it. getting hot through that glove, huh? Uh, I was getting hot. Okay. So I actually, I probably need that to cool down, the oven to cool down a little bit, do you think? Or can you watch these so that they don't Yeah, burn? I'll have to stay right on top of them because it, they'll cook really fast since it's a hot oven. Yes. So I'm going to do 375. What's your usual minutes? Take a minute off. Well, I usually do about four minutes or so, but let's, I think let's do three and you just keep an eye on these. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll put the hot pad right. there. And then we'll, okay. where are you going to be now so I can set the camera? Um, well, I'm going to be here and I think I'll probably, um, I think I'm probably going to sit down okay. for the next little bit of okay. it and because we're going to talk about the salads and so forth. Okay. So um, this also is a cutting board, you guys, from Holland Bowl Mill. So I use one side to cut on and then the other side I don't cut on so I can use it as a presentation board. I would flip it over and show you, but I've got... Um, all kinds of debris on it. You're so gonna wipe it off and bring you're it gonna wipe it off. And then this is one of the Holland Bowl Mill trays too. And I'm a tray collector. I love a wide variety of different kinds of trays. And so I just absolutely love this one. It is like silky smooth. This is cherry. It comes in different woods. And, um, and I use a lot of trays. You know, we like to eat outside. You can put everything on them and take them outside. You can, you know, do tea and a snack on it and um, lots of different things. There's a towel right there. Well, I had that great towel laying right over here. I course. had to take it to wipe you, my hands off. You on. took the towel. Okay. <laughs> I, took it. I robbed it. I robbed the towel. So, um, so anyway, if you like trays and that kind of thing, then um, the Holland Bowl so Mill So here's your trays. uncut side. Okay, so, so here's the pretty 
they're both actually pretty. We've got an N on there for nutmeg. Um, but this is one of the Holland Bowl Mill um, cutting boards. So I just cut on the other side and then I save this side so I can use it like a presentation board, which is really fun. Okay, so I'm gonna give you those and I'm gonna pull my chair over and um, talk to you guys. I wanna share a little bit more about salads. So um, this is especially fun for those of you whose bowls will just be coming. Yeah, and does this section have a, like a segment name? A segment name? Yeah, in case I want to put it as a separate video from the cooking demo. Oh, well. Yeah, um, like, is this about reasons to have a chopped salad or yeah, something? Yeah, this is like yeah. reasons to have a chopped okay, salad. Okay, well then let's, let's start a new segment. <laughs> no, well this is, I think it kind of could go all together, no? Well, together, and then maybe the one about salad separate. So yeah, let's do another little intro. Okay, he's gonna make me do another intro. You guys are in on it. And then when you see these videos come out, you'll go, oh, I was there when they videotaped that. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm watching the croutons now. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna zoom in on you. All right. So here we go, we're gonna do an intro, you guys. Hi everybody and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. Today we're gonna to talk about chopped salads. Why chop a salad? Well, I got a lot of reasons for that because we happen to love chopped salads. My husband Tom and I eat a salad every day uh, for one of our main meals. And yes, we do chop it before we add a lot of wonderful things. And why do we do that? Well, there's lots of good reasons. Um, chopping the salad really enhances the flavor. So when you chop all those wonderful dark leafy greens and the other vegetables that you put in it, and we, we like to have arugula, kale, spinach, red cabbage, red onion, broccoli slaw, shredded carrots and red onion and little tomatoes in our salads. And once we put that in our chopping bowl and we chop it, it just enhances the flavor so much because all of the juices are released from all of those different vegetables. And then, you know, we mix it. And so every bite is equally as delicious as the bite before, which is a lot different from just a salad that has big chunks of lettuce and vegetables in it. Chopping our salads also drastically reduces the volume of it. So, I mean, if, you, if we put our big salad in here in this 12 inch bowl, it would be heaping over the top of the bowl and we have big pieces of lettuce and you know how awful it is to stab that big piece of lettuce and you try to get it in your mouth and especially if you're eating in front of other people. So also it looks a lot less daunting after you've chopped it. So people who eat like we do, whole food plant-based, typically eat really big salads. And the question that we so often get asked if we're eating a salad in front of other people is, are you gonna eat all of that? Yeah, we're gonna eat all of it. Well, they even ask us that after they've seen our chopped salad. So imagine what they would say before it got chopped and what they might think. So anyway, it does reduce the volume of it and makes it a little bit more manageable. Chopping it also makes the hardier greens like kale, which is, you know, kale is pretty sturdy compared to like baby spinach or arugula or um, any other type of collard or chard. And we oftentimes like to do a mixture of those hearty greens in our salads as well. So we'll buy the super greens at Costco. We won't add those directly into our batch prep salads, but when we're chopping our salad, we might add a handful or two of those other types of greens just to get a little bit more diversity in the salad and feeding our um, gut biome. Also, when you chop it, it makes it, it makes it easier to eat because those sturdy greens have gotten chopped up into smaller bits. Not that you don't still have a lot of chewing to do, because you do. If you're making these big salads, it's a lot of chewing. Um, it takes us about 
anywhere between like 35 and 45 minutes to eat our lunch salads. It, chopping also makes it easier for kids to eat. You know, if you give kids a green salad, it's daunting to them because it's these great big pieces and they don't know what to do with it. And when it's chopped, then it's very easy to get it on your fork. I have to admit, I eat my chopped salad with a spoon. How many of you <laughs> eat your chopped salad with a spoon? Um, but Tom uses a fork, but I use a spoon. I don't want any of that stuff to fall off. I want to make sure I get it all in my mouth. Also, we have a lot of people tell us that as an older adult or making these chopped salads for their parents, their parents had a hard time chewing salad before because of dental work or maybe um, dental devices that they have in their mouth. But with a chopped salad, they can eat salads again. Many, many people email us and tell us that either they or their kids or their spouse didn't like salads until they started making chopped salads and now everybody's on board and they love the chopped salads. And that is just the difference in flavor. It's hard to believe that just chopping them up into smaller bits would make such a drastic change in the flavor, but it really does. Um, also, the um, chopping increases the moisture content of the overall salad because when you chop it, it starts to release all the liquid that's in it, whatever moisture is in it. And so then you need less salad dressing. So if you are trying to lose weight, that's extremely beneficial because you'll use less salad dressing because the salad tastes so much better. You don't have to completely coat it in a rich salad dressing. It'll be perfectly delicious with a little bit. And we'll talk about some different um, things that we use in place of salad dressing as well as salad dressings. All right, so those are gonna go in for, um, we're gonna do, let's do, since that's already hot, let's do like 385 and um, check them like at 10 minutes because normally I'm making those in a cold oven. So um, we're gonna, normally I would do like 400, but we're gonna reduce it a little bit because they're going into a hot oven. Um, also, dark leafy greens. Oh, is it crisp? Oh, it's crisp. Good job, good job. Wonderful, um, perfect. So did you, how many minutes did you end up doing those? Just three minutes. No, I had to add three because. Those are the thicker ones, the yeah. thicker tortillas too. Mm -hmm. Perfect, good job. Thank you, Tom. Dark leafy greens have something in them that's called thylakoids. That's T-H-Y-L-A-K-O-I-D-S, thylakoids, which helps suppress the appetite. So in Dr. Greger's How Not to Diet book, he talks all about thylakoids. They also prevent as much fat absorption from happening in, uh, in your um, system as well. So on page 383, you can read about that. Also, I think if you go to his website at nutritionfacts.org, you will also um, probably find a video on there about thylakoids. And so you want to have those dark leafy greens. They help suppress the appetite um, for hours after you have eaten. They also disrupt the absorption of um, fat and they're super healthy as, as well because they are dark and leafy and so you're gonna get um, a lot of nutrients from them. And because we're chopping <coughs> them, bless you, because we're chopping them in our salads, it makes it just so much easier to enjoy them and eat them. Um, and when you chop a salad, you can easily get a whole lot more of veggies in your salad than you might otherwise um, be able to eat because we've chopped them up. And so we add a lot of variety. One trick is to um, add more variety and a less amount of each. That way you can have a lot of different nutrients in that one salad. So I, I posted a salad on Facebook and Instagram that I made um, 
earlier in the week or last weekend and I went ahead and counted up how many different plants I had in that one salad. I had 34, that's right, 34 different plants in that one salad. And so that feeds what's called your gut biome, which is a really important, it's almost like an, an additional organ in your um, body. And so we want to have as much plant diversity as we can over the course of the week. And with the chopped salads, we find that we can do that quite easily because we put um, uh, a smaller amount of a larger quantity, a larger variety of things in those salads. So also the salads are low calorie density. Now calorie density, I have a whole video on YouTube about calorie density and how to sequence your meals using calorie density. So be sure just Google Nutmeg Notebook calorie density and you'll find my video on that. Calorie density is just the amount of calories for a specific prescribed measurement of food and of course the lower calorie density foods are going to be your vegetables non-starchy vegetables and then fruits and starch and um, you know your beans your legumes all of your grains and then tofu all of those things are like 600 calories a pound or less and we can eat a lot of quantity of those um, without disrupting our weight loss. And so, you know, in the days of my yo-yo dieting, I was always feast and famine. If I was on a diet, then I was, you know, weighing and measuring and eating small portions and feeling deprived. We don't have to do that on a whole food plant-based diet. And so because our salad is full of vegetables, and vegetables are full of fiber and water, they are very satisfying and they create a lot of bulk for a lot less calories than the high calorie density foods. We have stretch receptors in our stomachs that need to be engaged because that, when they become engaged, they tell the brain we're full. And so the chopped salads are really great for that because they create a lot of bulk without a lot of calories and they're super healthy and they're low fat as well. So the chopped salads are most excellent if you're trying to lose weight. Um, Tom lost 40 pounds, I lost um, 49 pounds eating this way, having a salad every day for one of our meals and we continue doing that because it's also just such an easy and delicious way to maintain our weight loss as well. As your body gets slimmer, you actually need fewer calories because you have less um, body mass. And so um, people always ask, well, you know, did you start adding back in a lot of fatty foods and things like that so you wouldn't keep losing weight? Well, no, I didn't because um, I became much smaller and, you know, I, I don't need as many calories at my smaller weight. Um, so anyway, our stomach holds about a quart of food and so the chopped salad is a really good way to get those stretch receptors engaged. Now for satiety's sake, we need to add starch to our um, salads. The salad itself, you know, is probably 150 calories and that is not going to sustain us. It might fill up our tummy but we're not going to have satiety from it because it just doesn't have enough calories in it. And so we need to add some healthy starches to it. Those complex carbohydrates are where we are going to get our energy from. So they're also feeding our brain and we need them. So, you know, don't jump on the bandwagon that carbohydrates are bad for you because they are not. They are extremely healthy and nutrient dense and we need them. So what are we talking about? Um, we're talking about legumes, beans, lentils, tempeh, 
tofu. Um, you know, you don't have to have a ton of those, but add some to your salad. But, but if you want a lot, go for it too. Like, you know, Tom can have like a cup of beans in his. Also, whole grains or seeds. So rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oat groat, millet, quinoa. I know quinoa is not technically a grain, but we treat it like it is a grain and it's very high in protein. So pick your favorite grains. You can make them in advance and you can freeze them. And I freeze them in either quarter or half cup portions. And so I can just pull out as much as I want and thaw it out. I can heat it up in the microwave and add it to my salad. You can do the same with your beans too. You can make up your beans and freeze them in smaller portions. And so in single servings, if you wish, and then pull out what you want for your salad. That's how I can make different kind of salad every day if I want, because I have all these different ingredients pre-made frozen or some of them in my refrigerator. Um, starchy vegetables like peas and corn and uh, lima beans, those are also great. Nuts or seeds, pumpkin, sunflower seeds. If you um, like nuts, you can have like an ounce of nuts in it. Uh, chia, flax, or hemp. This is a really great way to get your chia, your flax, or your hemp in. If you're not making smoothies to add them to, or you know some kind of a baked good that they could be put in, then putting them in your salad is a really great way to do it. I am not fond of like trying to chug a tablespoon of ground flax seed, but if I sprinkle it over my salad or chia seeds or hemp seeds, I don't even taste them in it, but it's a great way to get my omega-3s my omega in there. Um, also, after we chop our salad is when we add in the more moist vegetables. Um, in our batch prepped salads, which you can Google um, Nutmeg Notebook batch prep salads to see what I put in them and how I do it. We don't put a lot of super moist vegetables in there, and that is because things like cucumbers and bell peppers, once you've sliced them, then they start to go bad. They start, you know, weeping the moisture that is in them and um, they can ruin your salad. And so anything like that, cucumbers, beets, um, those moist um, veggies, we wait and add them the day that we're going to eat our salad. We also chop our salad the day that we're going to eat it. The most advanced um, time period that we would cut it would or chop it would be the night before if we're going to be traveling the next day and have to get up early to um, leave to catch a flight or to start a road trip. We, we would, um, I lost my train of thought, we would go ahead and chop it the night before and it would be fine the next day but we wouldn't add all the moist vegetables to it and we would not add salad dressings or vinegar to it. Um, also, don't forget about microgreens and sprouts. Add that to the salad. Now, microgreens and sprouts can go bad really quickly, and so we never add them to our batch prep salads. We always wait and add them to our salad. After we have chopped it, then we will add microgreens or sprouts. They are just little powerhouses of nutrients for you. And fresh herbs are delicious in your salads and can really make a big difference in the flavor. Of course, because I love Mexican food, I love cilantro. And I love putting fresh cilantro or mint or um, fresh parsley in my salads. We grow basil in our arrow garden, which, it, which is a hydroponic um, little garden in our kitchen and Tom puts basil in his salad, fresh basil, almost every day. And he puts it in before he chops his salad so it gets chopped up and distributed throughout his um, salad which makes it really delicious. Or also dried herbs are great too. When I do my Mexican salad, I will also add some cumin, some chili powder. If I have the chili lime seasoning from Well Your World, I will add that to it as well. Sun-dried tomatoes, there's so many things that you can add to your salads that make them really, really delicious. If you like um, turmeric, you can add some 
um, powder turmeric to it, or you can grate some fresh turmeric and add that to it. Ging the same with ginger, you could add some fresh grated ginger to it, garlic, so many things that you can do. Okay, let's talk about salad dressings. Oh, I forgot fruit. Fruit's very important. We always, um, well, Tom doesn't always add fruit to his. I always add fruit to my salad after I chop it. It could be apples or pears. My favorite, of course, is berries. Even in my Mexican salad, I'll add half a cup of fresh blueberries to it. So um, the clementines, the oranges, also um, some of the citrus juice can also be added. Um, I love to add lime juice, fresh lime juice, or you can use the bottled um, lime juice and add that to your salad. And that makes it just enhances the flavor. It just makes the flavor pop. So let's talk about salad dressings. Ooh, these look beautiful. Let's show them. And maybe you can put some on a plate, but let's, you want to go ahead and just show them. Yum, yum, yum. Look at these, you guys. Those are the Japanese sweet potato, everything bagel, croutons, yum, yum. So um, one trick with those is to let them um, sit and cool a little bit before you try to take them off of the air fryer um, tray. So if you have the, like the nonstick coating bucket style, you can probably remove them right away. But on this, it's better if we let them cool a bit and then they'll release much easier. Okay, so for oil-free salad dressings, I have a wide variety of recipes for those that are on my blog at nutmegnotebook.com. So we have our creamy balsamic is probably the, one of the most popular salad dressings that we have. Um, but then I guess the vegan ranch is right up there too. And I have a Caesar, I have two Caesars, one made with nuts and one made without. You can substitute white beans like cannellini beans cooked cannellini beans for nuts in salad dressing recipes if you want to keep the calorie density down um, and it's a lot less fat in those and also um, you can use fresh citrus juice so squeeze that fresh lemon or lime or orange or clementines and put that on your salad you'll be amazed at how delicious that is and the lime of course is fantastic with anything Mexican um, we can move on to salsa any kind of salsa is great in your salad so if you are in a restaurant and of course they're not going to have an oil-free dressing I will ask for either a um, some balsamic vinegar and make sure they understand that I don't want vinaigrette I just want the balsamic or ask for some salsa you can buy salsa you can make it yourself it's delicious on um, salads I have recipes for um, like a pico de gallo, a mango salsa. I have an easy tomato salsa that you can use canned tomatoes, a, a tomatillo um, salsa. So salsa adds a lot of flavor and you can do hot or you can do mild. And then Tom, if you'd bring over the container of um, vinegars and dressings, then I'll show them that. Uh, so there is absolutely positively no reason to have boring salads. If you don't like salads, it's because you haven't tried salads like what we make because our salads are not boring at all. They are absolutely positively delicious and amazing. So we love California balsamic vinegars and they come, they're flavored. They do not have any salt, oil, or sugar and they are delicious. So um, let's see, which way do I need to turn that? Here we go. So these are some of our favorites. This one, oh, is the Garden Deal Mustard. This one is so fantastic. And I especially love this in the summertime with tomatoes, oh, and dill. You can add fresh dill to your salad and then some of this. And we're layering the flavors because remember, these chopped salads are big and so if you layer the flavors in them that is going to make them more flavorful because they are big they get a little bit diluted in flavor you know because of the size of them but we're chopping it which is adding going to add flavor and then we're going to add lots of flavorful ingredients as well so um, this is really delicious we'll give you a link to um, 
the um, California balsamic. This is sweet heat. It's really not hot. It's just very, very flavorful. And so um, Thomas from California balsamic, he came up with this because he doesn't like hot heat. And so he came up with this one because it's flavorful, but it is not hot. So they do have a habanero, which is really hot. So if you like hot, you can get that. Now where you live, you might be able to also find the um, some flavored vinegars. Oftentimes, oftentimes it will be the stores that that sell um, oil that also have flavored vinegars. It's not focused, yeah. We gotta focus in. Tom's getting a workout behind the scenes here, you guys. He's running from camera to camera and doing everything. Now we're, now we're focused. Now are you focused? Yeah. Is this the ruby red onion? No, that's seven herb Italian. Oh, this is the, oh, this is one of Tom's favorites, the seven herb Italian. So, you know, he likes to put that fresh basil in his salad. You can switch me over to the other camera, please. I'm on my way. Okay. He likes to put that fresh basil in his salad. So this seven herb Italian is really, really good. And then this is um, a fresh basil. And Tom really likes the ones that have the fresh, um, the herbs in them. And so um, we, you know, we both have our own little favorites that yeah. we like. And then the, these dressings oh, also. Where are you at? Okay. These um, vinegars. Oh, Hold it in the middle where the focus is. The focus is in the middle. Oh, okay. Here. Is that better? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So um, the California balsamics also come in these little travel sizes. These are um, three point, no, three ounce. They're three, these are three ounce bottles and they are little squeeze bottles and these will go through TSA no problem so you can take these with you when you travel when we go to a Chinese restaurant I will take the teriyaki one or the sweet heat with me if I can just get rice and steamed vegetables then I'll take my vinegar with me and be able to put it on on the um, rice and vegetables and make them taste super tasty or if we go out and I find a salad and they don't have any kind of dressing for me then I I can use um, the little bottle of vinegar I keep a couple of these in my car so that I always have them I can take my chickpea croutons with me or the other croutons that I make um, and I can just take those with me or my tortilla strips and then from well your world we have these dressings Oops, I, it's hard, it's always backwards, so I can never remember which way to turn it. Um, these are SOS free salad dressings. They have the sweet heat and then the, um, the sweet mustard. So and I like both of these. I even like the sweet mustard to dip my air fried, oil free air fried french fries in. But Well Your World also has a whole line of different salad dressing sauces, ketchup, mustard, um, and delicious things like that. And then the Simply Lemon from California Balsamics is really one of my favorites in the summertime. And this is that teriyaki that I was telling you about, which is really great for stir fries and rice. Makes is it, it California all, Balsamic or California Balsamics on the, on the ad, address? It should just be California Balsamic. Okay, I'll try it. I'm gonna put it in the show okay, notes. Okay, great. So, um, so anyway, Oh, I forgot a couple things. I wanted to show you this. These are just Yukon Gold Potatoes. I air fried some of these and you can just make like crispy little um, potatoes to go on your salads as well. So if I don't have the sweet potatoes, um, I will just take some already uh, roasted potatoes. It could be russets. It could be little red potatoes. I happen to usually buy Yukon gold potatoes and they're already baked. I've had them in the refrigerator and then I just cut them up and I put them in the air fryer 400 degrees for, it, depending on how big, these were little. So these only took about oh, 12 or 13 minutes, but then that gives you a nice little crunch. You can also take polenta and um, polenta that you've put in a pan and let it set up and then you can cut it into little squares and you can air fry it and that gives you an, a nice little crunchy topping for your salads as well. Okay, I am going to check and see what we have going on. Um, oh, 
Vagana says, you remind me of Jane Esselstyn, who keeps an onion board precisely oh, they were talking about just for cutting onions and she's garlic. She's talking to a neighbor up above. I know, but I'm reading it. Okay. So her strawberries don't end up tasting like onions. I love that. That's so fun. Um, who makes those vinegars? This is from California Balsamic. Tom put um, a link in the show notes for you. And um, Vagana says, love that little tray for the vinegar bottles. This came from um, Crate and Barrel. And it's really made for um, putting like um, utensils. your utensils in and napkins for like a picnic, but it works great for the vinegars as well. So just yeah. look for, you know, like a utensil um, carrier. Yeah, Bonnie has a question. Um, just a little bit up. Bonnie, we always eat ours with a spoon too. How often do you wax your fruit holland bowl with the holes? Whenever it starts to look dry, Bonnie. So the, um, the one she's talking about is our fruit bowl. Maybe Tom, you might want to grab that so we can um, show that. Yeah, we're not, we're not typically making it wet, but if it, you know, but if it starts to get a little dry, we'll yeah, give it well, a it shot. Yeah, well, it just, it gets dry just from sitting out, especially in the um, winter time when the heat is running. So if it starts to look dry, then we'll go ahead and wax it. And that's the same with, you know, the cutting boards, all of the bowls that we have and use. Um, it's the same thing. If they start to look dry, then we go ahead and oil or wax them. And um, let's see. I saw something else. Oh, um, somebody was saying, is California Balsamics having a sale this month? They are actually. And so um, if you use our affiliate link, affiliate link and go there, all of the details of the special that they are having will be right there on the website. I added it to the show notes and it's in the chat as well. Okay, great, great. And so that's what um, I have about the salad, you guys. Do you have any questions about the um, chopped salads? How we make them, how, you know, um, anything about the chopped salads that I can help you with. Tom, I'm gonna give you the bananas back. <laughs> there we go. Um, G Girl says, just curious, why did Tom stop eating oats? Oh, because he realized that he wasn't, well, I'll let you answer. Why am I answering? I'll let you answer, honey. Uh, I don't know. Give me a break from maybe, chatting. Maybe your answer is better than mine. I doubt it. Um, that is something that just evolved. It wasn't really like a decision. Um, March of 2023-ish, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we uh, went on a 10-day supervised modified fasting program with Sia from 6D Living. And at that point in time, I had lost, oh, like, 30 to 35 pounds off of my initial high weight. Um, and I was having, um, you know, rather feverish, feverishly uh, uh, tied to having a very specific um, bowl of oats in the morning, you know, fully loaded with berries and bananas and hemp and chia and everything, everything good. It was all good stuff. Um, but part of the modified fasting program um, was the eating window. And I was on a, eight hour eating window for that one. And so that involved not eating till like 1230 and then being done eating, or not eating till 1030 and being done by 630. Well, by the time it's 1030 and you're getting busy and it's probably closer to 11, I just thought, well, I'll just wait and have lunch a little bit earlier than I was going to. And so I'd have my lunch at 1230 or whatever. And so, and that was just for a specified piece of time. Uh, I had no plans of, of, you know, not returning to having mor morning oats, but after the 10 days was up, it, I, had, I had fallen out of the habit of wanting that bowl of oats so desperately. And so it became apparent to me that, you know, because we talk a lot about, uh, you know, you, you know, Food is, is a, when you're hungry, it's a good time to eat food. But if you're not, not hungry, then do you need to eat necessarily? Uh, so the, the intermittent fasting just, it broke the habit. It's not that I still don't eat oats. I may have uh, a snack of oats, but it's not, 
not this, in the morning. It's not this 6.37 a.m. every single day, got to have it a uh, mental thing that's going on. It might be I eat lunch, and then if lunch is really light, I might have a two o'clock oat, you know, oat snack, and then we have our meal at six, our evening meal at six thirty, and we're done eating by seven. Now we we I more or less um, on a uh, six six and a half hour eating window from twelve thirty to to seven, sort of thing. By the time I'm done with dinner, um, and so there's just you know not time to to have to have oats in there, so. It wasn't like I, I did some research and found some science that pulled me away from it. There was no scientific reason for that. The habit just got interrupted by the fasting program. So Yeah, and you just the, found out you just didn't need it. You didn't need that. Yeah. So I, I still want oats from time to time, and I'll indulge myself with a little bowl of oats, but now it's kind of but like... Not, but not, not first thing in the morning. No, it's, it's like a treasured snack once in a while. Right. So. Okay, so here we have our, um, these are just the Yukon Gold potatoes that were already baked that we air fried. And then these are the um, croutons, the Japanese sweet yeah, potato still on and there. Hannah. Do we want to? No, we are on here. Too. Yeah. Did we, we, we didn't show these up close, did we? Maybe. These are, I wonder what these taste like. You should try it and find out. Mm hmm. Okay, and then you can show them this. So we have the crispy, oil-free tortilla strips finished. in the middle that are finished, and Tom cooked them I'm just I'm going to demonstrate perfectly. the crunchiness. Please. Do you hear that, you guys? <laughs> and then we have the, um, the Japanese sweet potato croutons with the everything bagel seasoning, and those are great. And then we have the garlic chickpea croutons as well. Oh, look, so, they look just like the picture. <laughs> they do. <laughs> really delicious with a Caesar salad as well. So these are just um, really fun little additions to your salad that um, just add a lot of flavor, different texture, and just make them a whole lot more fun. I love the honest question. Have you ever put anything in your chopped salad that you have regretted adding? Mm. Have you? Not that I recall. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I ever had. Did you ever add a spicy thing that was like too spicy? No, not usually. You know, the only thing I can think of that's happened, because uh, one of my favorites is to make uh, uh, more in the wintertime, the, the, what, I, the, what I call the Mexican hot salad, where I chop the salad and then I add some cumin um, and some salsa, Microwave that, heat up my beans, rice, and corn. Okay, microwave it for how long? Just to take the chill off? Yeah, just a minute, just so it's warm, <laughs> not hot, just to the warm it. Salad. The he chopped salad. He puts in a, not in the wood bowl, but he puts it in, in a, a two, corral two bowl. In a corral bowl, and I nuke it for two minutes. Right. Or one, you know, one minute just to warm it up. But anyway, occasionally, I'm, I'm, I'm just sprinkling the cumin out of the cumin jar, and it spilled. And so I got like three tablespoons of cumin in it, and so wow. then I... What do you do with that? Because it's like in the salad. So what did you do? I don't remember this. Um, I, I think I spooned some out and I didn't put it back in the jar. I didn't do that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think I probably put it uh. in the sink and then, and, then, and then I just stirred the rest. I maybe added extra beans. Just to try to You know what, that's why I stirred it, it. I stirred the greens and the beans right. I stirred it all together because there was a lot of cumin in the salad. That is so funny. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. All right. So, so um, what do you want to talk about next? I think we're about done. Okay. Did you, you... you got through everything on your, your reasons for salad. Um, we, we showed briefly the stuff we did from the cooking. Um, yes, we already showed that. Yeah, so we'll finish up that video with this since this is a studio, since this is a, a, a video studio shoot session. <laughs> So, because I'll splice those into a, I'll splice that into a standalone video. Okay. Um, well, do you want to? Um, oh, we just need to, the bowls again. Um, yeah, let's finish up with that. So, okay. anyway, for this piece of the studio session, uh, we just don't go away because we're going to stay. But, well, I'll do, I'll do, I, I'll do the end after we say goodbye to them. Then you can. I'm, or, I'm on the middle of a record here. We're recording oh, on this. Oh, so we've got to do I, it now. Okay, so we've got right. to say we've got to say goodbye, but we're not. We're saying goodbye to the video recording, <laughs> not to you guys. Okay. 
<laughs> so, so don't go away. Stay. All right. So, so thank you for joining us for this cooking. So have whatever you want to say. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining us to learn more about how you can make amazing chopped salads. We hope that you will try these recipes and that you enjoy um, what we shared. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps our ratings here on YouTube and it makes YouTube decide that maybe they should um, let other people know about our channel. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do and click on that bell because when you click on that bell, then you will get notification whenever we post a new video or when we go live. And if you haven't subscribed to our blog, please go over to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe. Tom sends out an email whenever we have something new and exciting to tell you about, a new recipe, or there's something interesting going on in the plant-based community that we think that you would like to know about. So thank you so much for joining us today. It was our pleasure to spend time with you. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy, healthy one chopped salad at, at a time. time. See you next time. Bye. I wasn't sure exactly what you were going to say. I, I, was, hoping, chopped, I was hoping you were going to well, say chopped salad. I knew it would be salad. salad or chopped salad, but I think, well, chopped salad is what we've been talking about, so we should do that. Yeah, I'm glad that you did. I thought, okay, okay I'm just going to go that he's going to be intuitive about this, and he's going to say the same thing I am. Okay. I have such great intuition on rare occasion. You do have good so, intuition. Okay. So, yeah. Um, do you want to bring the bulls back and talk about them, or just talk about them and not bring them back? I, we, we'll pile them here, but we, if you want to know about the perfectly imperfect bowl sale, go to the beginning of this video. Tammy went through in great detail what's involved in the parameters of that. I will go grab them. Okay. Uh, but let's Question just, for you. How oh. long is, Ed, Lorena wants to know, how long is the sale for the Holland Bowls? Um, it's scheduled to go through tomorrow night at midnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, and, uh, we'll, as long as there's go inventory, yeah. as long as there's inventory left. Okay. So, so what we know, what we know right now is that there are very few of the 15 15s inch. left. And if you show that, I'm going to look on the site and make sure it doesn't say sold out yet. Oh, go look. I was expecting it to sell out today. Okay. So just that um, size, just that size. Yeah. So this is the 15 inch. And remember, you're going to be ordering by um, size, not by the type of wood. So you'll be ordering either a 12, a 15, or a 17. But in the comments, you can make a request if you have this type of wood would be my preference. And maybe at this point in time, I would even put in a second choice in there if you have two that you would prefer, um, just, in, just yeah. in case. So is it still showing? It, it doesn't say sold out yet. Okay. But, but they've all gone home, so I don't know if there's anybody there to say that they're sold out. Oh. I, you know, so... Um, oh, you don't know if the computer automatically, if their website automatically changes. It, I would true. think it would, that it would, I would think it would be automatic. So, but okay. anyway, yeah, there were just, um, um, at noon, there were only 19 left. And so I'm, and when we started this video, I was guessing maybe that there were 12 or 15 left at best. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they'll go fast. Yeah. And then also, so, so these are popular because that's our favorite chopping size. Right. And that's our second yeah. favorite. This is our second, second favorite. We mentioned earlier uh, that the discount on the 17 inch bowl is from 40 to 60% of the regular retail price, depending on the type of wood you choose. The price stays the same. The price doesn't change for the imperfect sale. But if you if you request and receive a walnut, that's like a 60% discount. If you request and receive a uh, cherry, well then that's a 50% discount. If you request and mm. receive, a, receive a, or if you don't get what you request, because there are only is beechwood left, then that's a 40% discount. Right, so it's a great so, savings no matter yeah. what. On yeah. them. 12 inch bowls, you can pretty much request whatever wood you want right mm -hmm. now, and it's highly likely that you will get it. Uh, th they have a good supply of the 12 inch imperfect bowls. So go ahead in the comments, uh, request the wood type that you would like. Um, you know, we talked about earlier walnuts, the most expensive, um, and cherry is the next most expensive. Red oak and ash are in there somewhere. Maple is more expensive, beech is the least expensive. Um, and they're, they're all hardwoods. I like my beechwood bowl. Tammy likes her cherrywood bowl. Um, 
So it's just, you know, what kind of look do you want? Yeah. Also, and I love this one. No. This is like, this is one of my favorite bowls. Yeah, well, I'm going to wax that up and make it even prettier I know. For you. I can't wait so, until you get it all Also on the sale, up. they put on the, on the, uh, for the sale, the utensils and the beeswax. And would you grab that sheath? You'll find these on the page, which um, is, is not flashing like it was earlier here. Um, I'll, I'll show that in just a moment. Okay. These items are all also on the sale. If you you're gonna well, want, they're included, yeah. but that and there's a discount on this and this, but not the sheath. Yeah, the, the sheath is regular price because he doesn't have room to discount it because yeah, it's labor intensive. Labor intensive, but mm -hmm. we like having a sheath. If you're gonna want a sheath, order it when the shipping is free because you don't. It's not inexpensive, but if you buy this and then pay shipping, it's a lot of money for a piece of wood. But if you order it with your order, it's really safe. Saves your fingers. Especially if you're reaching in the drawer for your knife. Yeah. So it's Safe way to it's store much it. less expensive than a trip to the doctor for a severely cut finger. If you're okay using the uh, mineral oil beeswax combo, do order this with your bowl. You will need it, unless you're going to just use the mineral oil treatment only. You'll have to do that more often. So, um, and then these are just pretty, we pretty serving utensils. They are. Go They're nice. The They're nice to have. They, yeah. you know, enhance just the whole yeah. look of your bowl. So we only do this sale once, once a, year. a year. It is only through Nutmeg Notebook. You will not find it on site. Uh, when you use the link we provided, uh, it takes you to a very simple landing page here. Holland Bull Mill, uh, Shop Holland Bull Mill's imperfect sale. And the, the inventory is right here. Uh, 12 inch, 15 inch, 17 inch, Put your word wood preference in the comments. And then the three items we just showed you, you're not buying the knife with this, you're just buying the sheath. Right, because the, the bowl comes with the Mezzaluna knife. Yeah, uh, yeah, the sale, uh, camera two. The Nutmeg Notebook Imperfect Sale is a set, the bowl and the knife together. Uh, you're, you know, it's not a separate line item, so. Right. Okay, so we've got a couple questions. Okay. Pagana says, doesn't Amazon have a spring sale going on? Are you still doing Amazon Lives? We are still on Amazon. We still use our Amazon shop. We still put things in it for people to find because, you know, Cammy finds some really great kitchen gadgets mm -hmm. and I put them on there because she's going to get asked, where did you get that? Um, and so we are very active with the Amazon, the Amazon.com. Okay forward slash shop, forward slash, slash not make notebook. That's probably down in the bottom of our show notes of every video, including this one. Um, we actually pulled back from doing the Amazon Lives. Um, they were fun, um, but the platform that Amazon had with that was technologically very problematic. And it also was taking up too much time in, uh, that we wanted to apply to two things, our personal lives mm. and our plant-based mission. So we pulled back from doing those lives. We're still in the registry, I've noticed, but we haven't done an Amazon Live for a while um, because it was just taking up too much time and, and, and pulling energy away from our plant-based mission. Right. So, we so, kind of had a reset after my dad passed away um, last October. And so um, we made this decision um, coming home um, after my dad passed away and we just thought, you know what, life is short and um, where do we really want to spend our energy? We want to spend our energy with our family and then also our mission of um, helping people in the plant-based community be successful at um, having this lifestyle so that it does prevent the um, lifestyle related diseases um, that are associated with the standard American diet. So that was a bit of a reset for us, a realization. Um, and then we um, decided, you know, our focus is really more useful and helpful in the plant-based community just to um, help everybody get healthy and stay yeah. healthy. Yeah, on, on the... Um you know, the emphasis on the bowls. We spend a lot of time on bowls. We're consistently talking about bowls. We consistently talk about Vitamix. They are one of our other vendor partners. Um, 
and then also, you know, the, the California balsamic and the local spicery and the well-being bars. There's, there's a family of vendors that if you go back through our videos for years, you'll find they're pretty consistent. And so, so we stay with those vendors because they support, provide tools and products to support the, the plant-based lifestyle that we are ab, 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 advocating. advocating, advocates for. So, and those affiliate relationships do fund our channel. That's, that's very true. Um, and so, which, the, is, so, which is how we can provide yeah. all the free content that we do yeah. and make all the videos that we make. Yeah, the bowl piece is we, it, it, having chopped salads was a game changer for us. It like, I totally covet, look forward to, can't wait to get my dinner salad. She has hers at lunch, I have mine usually at dinner. Um, and we have received hundreds of emails from folks that, went, that are saying, oh my gosh, I got the bowl. I'm chopping my salad. I had no idea that I could eat so well and feel so good and get so many great ingredients into a meal. And so they're thanking us for, for you know, saying, hey, why don't you buy a bowl and chop a salad in it? And by the way, go to the website, make your salad this way. So the, the, bowl, the bowl thing for our lifestyle and our way of eating is a big deal. And so that's why we're, 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 always, we're always beating the bowl instead of beating the drum. <laughs> right. And so. if you go to my Facebook page, Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, I asked people earlier in the week, um, you know, can you tell me if you like chopped salads, if you make chopped salads and you've got a Holland bowl, can you tell me what you think about it? And so go there and read these people's testimonials. And um, if you many, want to check the questions, I can sure. pop those up real and quick. Many, many people, um, should I go back to one on the camera? Yeah. Or stay. Um, many people um, even posted pictures of their bowls and, you know, shared. Um, how much they love chopping their bowl. They love their Holland bowl. Many people bought mm, the, yeah. the um, perfectly imperfect bowls last year. Some people have waited an entire year for this sale so that they can get their bowl at, at um, the imperfect price. Here, what, what, did, what did people think of, of, the, of, the, <laughs> of the thumbnail for today? <laughs> I don't know. Did anybody notice it? Okay, so you were going to put up testimonials as soon as you find them. Yeah, okay, I'm on the way. Okay, so um, J.K. Sampley says, I received an email today and my bowl will be arriving to my school that I teach at by next Tuesday. Woot! That is so exciting. And quite a few people have posted in the chat here that they've gotten their email saying that their bowl is on the way. So, um, and when we talked to Corey, Today he said that they have they shipped out a ton of bowls yesterday. More today, they're working tomorrow, and they'll be shipping bowls out yet tomorrow. And so that's very exciting. G Girl says, when adding lemon or balsamic, is that after chopping and transferred to a bowl that you will be eating the salad in? I usually add um, my vinegar or my salad dressing or um, my lime juice, I usually add that while it's still in the bowl. And then, um, you know, so I make my salads really gorgeous and do the beautiful tops on them and um, arrange them in a beautiful fashion. And I take pictures of them so that I can post them on social media so that I can show you guys so that you can see too what's on that salad. Before I eat it, usually, I'll stir it up. It depends on the kind of salad. If it has like a falafel patty and hummus and, couss and, and um, um, a salad on it, then I might not um, stir it up because I'll want to take a bite of the falafel and a bite of the hummus. But if I'm going to um, stir it together, then I'll go ahead and stir it together. I'll dress it in the bowl and then I will use a spatula to a rubber sp or a silicone spatula to move it into a two quart Corel bowl and then I eat out of the Corel bowl. You could eat out of this but it's just too much like a trough to me. It's too big and so I prefer to put it in a, a smaller um, bowl to eat it. 
So, but it's perfectly okay to, you know, have the vinegar in here. And then I rinse this out. As soon as I get my salad out of it, then I go to the sink and, you know, um, rinse it out, dry it, and, um, and then let it sit on the countertop until it's dry before I put it on the shelf in my pantry. So when you're using the wood bowls, you never want to put them, immerse them in a sink of soapy water or water at all, you know, not immerse it. You can put a little bit of water in it, use your dishcloth, a little bit of soap, clean it out, rinse it, and then dry it and let it sit on the counter to get completely dry. But we shake the water out, we dry it with a towel um, and absorb all of that moisture because we don't want our bowls to crack. Um, you know, they are expensive. We want them to last a lifetime. And so, um, and never put it in the dishwasher. I know it, it seems ridiculous that we even have to say that, but, um, but according to Corey, um, we need to say never put it in your dishwasher either. Okay. So Tom's got um, some of the, the um, comments that people left us. So Rachel said, I bought a Holland Bowl Mill Wood Bowl after Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook posted about it, using it to prepare chopped salads easily. I am hooked on chopped salads now. My parents even bought me another Holland Bowl Mill Wood Bowl with a beautiful free inscription on the bottom for Christmas of 2022 because I use the bowl so often. And then she posted that gorgeous picture of her beautiful chopped salad and all the amazing toppings that she put on it. And then Connie says, yes, I purchased one with the knife and absolutely love it. Perfect for a chopped salad. Patricia said, I love my Holland Mill Bowl. It's inscribed and great for making chopped salads, which I make daily. Thanks for the recommendation. And Kathy said, love both of the 15 inch bowls I bought through your site from Holland Bowl Mill. One is from the Imperfect Sale and both are beautiful, almost too pretty to chop in. And June says, we are loving ours. And she posted a picture of it. Looks like she got a beautiful cherry bowl. And Linda says, I love my Holland Bowl. I bought it last year during the Perfectly Imperfect sale and it's wonderful. Love that. And there's, oh, so here's one of the salads that um, I made and photographed. I love creating these kind of mosaic type um, salads. Uh, it's a, a form of art for me, I guess, food art. And I love doing that. It makes me feel so good when I go to eat it because it was so beautiful and there's no reason to eat ugly food, right? But you don't have to take time to do that. It will, it tastes equally as good if you just put everything in the bowl and give it a toss as well. So I do want to say that, but I do, I enjoy the creativity of it. I like plating food so that it's pretty. Um, G Girl too. says, hit the like button. It's a free way of supporting mm. Tom and Tammy. Thank you. So we don't, appreciate that. Don't delay. Get your bowl today. Oh, I like that. Um, Apple O'Day says, salad mandalas. Mandalas. Is I, am I saying it right? Mandalas? Mandalas. Mandala? Mandalas? No? No, mandalas. the things. The oh, things. The, the designs. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Jill says, my bowl um, order is coming on Wednesday. Yay. Well, hopefully we great. gave you some great ideas today on things to put on top of those salads that you are going to chop in your new bowl. Right. Which will get knife marks when you chop because that's what it's for. And it will have a green patina in the bottom of it if you if are you are using eating it. a healthy amount of salads. That's right. Absolutely. And then, you know, lots of other things. You can use these when you're not chopping a salad. You can put fruit in them. You can pop popcorn, put popcorn in and make your tortilla chips in the um, air fryer without oil. And, you know, when we have potlucks, um, we have some friends that make like gallon sized bags, multiple of, of them. Oil -free of oil-free tortilla chips free tortilla chips and bring them and you could easily put those in here as well. They can store different vegetables and fruits and um, in the, the winter time I love the 17 inch to put my uh, winter squash in as well. So you'll find lots of ways to use them I'm sure. Lorna just got her 15 inch ordered. 
Congratulations. So, so it, the order went through just now. That's good so to hear. There's, there's still, still some, some left. left. Yeah. That's good. That's great, you guys. Yeah, they had 90 more this year than last year. Last year, we had 110 of the 15-inch bowls. And they sold the first day. And they were gone by like 3 o'clock the afternoon of the first day. We had so many people We upset. had a lot of sad people to... to uh, a lot of people to talk to about 12 inch and 17 inch bowls. Yeah, they were so, they were sad to have missed out so, on it. So he did judicious, judiciously save up this the, over the year to have more of the 15s. So thank you for letting us know. Yeah, that's okay. great. Well, Missy, uh, Apple O'Day said fantastic live stream. Thank you. Yeah, um, hope you enjoyed the 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 the. Uh, studio session and you guys got this to be is, here while yeah. we were making other videos yeah, when we're shooting well. regular uploads it's what we do that she'll have like three different recipes and then we're, we'll shoot them i'll prep everything ahead of time yeah and then, so that we can just do them bang 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 yeah and then they all wind up in this giant all these different files which i have then i yeah. take them apart and re-edit them and then make them into the uploads so but then but yeah. that allows me to get my kitchen yeah. lives are great but they do run really long so when there's specific information in a live, mm -hmm. I want to take the time moving forward uh, to break them up to to slice that very specific information out and give it its own little you know mm -hmm. 15 20 minute video where it's searchable. People can find that information because there's so much informa information in these big live shows it gets lost. It does. It's not searchable. Yeah. So and anyway, it's a, and it makes it a better use of our time too. To be able, you know, so that yeah. um, we can break these down so that into smaller videos, so more people will get yeah. the information. Yeah. Is well, great. we should have had Jill running camera one. We should have had G Girl running <laughs> camera two. Uh, Vigana could have been monitoring the sound over here. I know. We could put you all to work. That's okay. right. All right. All right. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining us. If you haven't yet, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, click the bell so that you'll get notifications whenever we go live or we upload a new video. And obviously, Tom's going to turn this one into like three or four different videos. And if you haven't subscribed to nutmegnotebook.com, go over to the blog and subscribe so you can get on our email list. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy, healthy one chopped salad at, at a time. time. I didn't know if you were going to go generic and go one meal at oh, a time. Oh no, chopped salad. Let's do yeah. that again. We got to do that. That's take two. Or which one are we doing? Chopped salad. Chopped salad okay, at a time. Go again. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy, healthy one chopped salad, salad at a time. time. See you next time. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.